Hey, Lauren. Hi, how are you? I am good. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to Set Real Talk Tuesday. I have the honor of being joined by you, Triple SA, Pride Player, Professional Softball, Lauren Chamberlain. Thank you for joining us, Lauren. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited we can work this out and do this. Yeah, so guys, it's, you know, it's been hard connecting with Lauren. Lauren was under the weather. <laughs> it has. <laughs> She was feeling uh, her shoulder. She came off of an injury, and we we made it happen, though. We did. We did. I'm feeling Thank good. I'm, I'm actually back up. I'm ready to move and talk, and we're good. Right? I'm yes, looking good. So, guys, if you're just joining us, U Triple S A Pride softball player, professional softball, Lauren Chamberlain, joining us. Lauren, you're in Oklahoma. I am. Yes, Edmond good. area. She's in the Edmonton area. Y'all, she's coming off of All-Star Weekend. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah, my family lives back in Orange County, so I got to kind of do a two-in-one and, and check out the scene in L.A. Yes, love it. So, guys, come on in. Tag a friend. You know, we've been talking about this play like a girl, and I love it. Lauren not only plays like a girl, she excels. She's doing some major things in the softball world. And we wanted to hear from her. Just signed a new contract with the Pride. I did, yes. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So you're going to be in the Orlando area, Central Florida. Yes, Melbourne, Melbourne area. Yes, that's where my team's located. Beer. Oh, so how long? For how long will you be there? What was, you know, you got this contract. What does that mean for you? Right. So this, I just got off of a three-year contract with them. So it's renewing that contract, which is huge. I love that team, love that organization. Um, but we are in off season right now. I will travel there in May. We have a little bit of spring training and then we'll go till about late August. So it's a pretty short season with a, a long off season. So I'm ready to get back at it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So from Orange County, mm -hmm. uh, you ha your mom, your dad, your sister, Yes, younger sister. Yeah, they're all still there. My sister's at UCSB, Santa Barbara, um, biology major, killing it. She's got the brains. I got the athletic ability. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're all still there. I'm trying to get them to make their way out, but at least I have an excuse to go back to California. I love California. For sure. Okay, so tell us, growing up, did you think you would be playing professional softball? No shot. No shot. Um, I really wanted to be an Olympic softball player. And that was since like third grade on. Um, and then it got taken out of the Olympics in 08. And it's kind of been on a drought. So I kind of had to shift my thinking. Um, and it really got towards college softball. And then after um, college softball, there wasn't really an option. Um, when I got to college, I realized that the league, um, the NPF National Pro Fast Pitch League was um, gaining some traction, some hotter players were going into the league. So it was definitely um, an option for me. And then I ended up getting drafted number one in 2015. So it was just kind of all, you know, put together at the right time. Nice. Yeah. Guys, if you're just joining us for Set Real Talk Tuesday, I have Lauren Chamberlain, professional softball player, U Triple SA. Lauren, you were telling us, you know, we talk about visualization and where you see yourself. You know, you didn't think about professional softball, but in third grade, you did a project. Tell us a little bit about that project and how, I mean, that is really visualization in every sense of the word. Right. Third grade, I wrote down on a project. It was kind of one of those, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you see yourself doing um, when you're older? And I said, I wanted to win a gold medal with the USA team, the USA softball team. And that's just something that, I mean, for as long as I can remember since I've been playing softball, it's been in my veins. It's been in my blood to to strive towards that gold medal. Now, like I said, in 08, it was taken out of the Olympics. So the fact that it's back in 2020, which is huge, we're, so, we're all the sport is so excited about that. But that just kind of like brings it full circle, um, gives me that goal again. And it's, it's renewed my purpose of why I play softball. Love it. So for you guys, if you're like me, who just, you didn't even know that softball was taken out of the Olympics in 2008. Right. Um, you mentioned that it was because the USA and, and Japan mm -hmm. kept winning. There was no real competition. Right. I think that's one of the, the major reasons uh, the board that represents 
um, picking the sports um, all over the world for the Olympics didn't really, I guess, see the importance of softball or baseball just from a world standpoint. There weren't a lot of countries that were able to um, provide a really good softball team to create some competition. So like you said, it was USA, Japan, USA, Japan going back and forth, um, which it, it pretty much still is. But as we're back in the Olympics now, um, teams are like, you, we've got a lot of USA um, people that live in the USA right now going back into uh, like Puerto Rico, Mexico, um, Canada. So everybody's stacking up. Like I really, you can feel the energy coming back around softball. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 2020, that's the goal to get into the Olympics. That is the so you're off season, you're training. What is an off season training schedule look like for you? So it's usually every day, pretty much uh, weekends off. It's been a little tough um, with an injury. I've been kind of having to, and I'm so go, go, go. Um, so having to shut down in the fall, I had that surgery in September. So having to shut down and kind of rehab, that's what my off season is looking like right now. Um, I actually started doing bar. I don't know if you've heard about um, bar classes, uh -huh. the, the ballerina. <laughs> I feel like a ballerina in there, like I'm training for it, but yeah. Um, Lots it's, of core. It's not easy. No, it's not. Okay, so I go on with women that are a lot older, and I walked in and I'm like, okay, this is the, I got this. No, like this is no problem. <laughs> and I get in there and I was shaking, coming out of my po like the poses, the holds, and then I got women coming up to me like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, I'm not about to tell you I'm a professional athlete. Like I was just falling on my face. <laughs> So now <laughs> right, right. No, like I can't even look and there's mirrors everywhere, girl. Like it's, it's not even, a, it's a horrible time. Um, but I feel like that's been good just for, you know, stabilization and working on like kind of getting back to me. So it's been a, a slow, tedious off season, but um, still keeping myself busy. So never having gone through a serious injury before, just shy of six months ago, here you were having surgery. Mm -hmm. So your, your labrum, yeah, labrum and bicep repair. And yeah. bicep. I mean, what were you going through mentally? So I kind of went into it, and I'm usually like this pretty, like, just go with the flow. Like, don't stress about things. Like, you know, whatever happens, happens, right? So I go into the surgery, and I'm kind of like, oh, this is, like, you know, interesting. Like, never had a surgery before. Nothing hit me in the face. Like, nobody's business. I mean, when you've got, like, just the pain pills, and, and you can't, you know, like your appetite's weird and, and you're just like kind of like a slug and taking like I've said, someone that's so go, go, go. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have hyperactive anxiety. Like I got to be doing something at all times. Um, so to take someone that's in perpetual motion and kind of like put them on pause and, and say, sit down. Um, it was kind of a mental thing for me. I was just like, I got in a funk and I couldn't get out of it. Um, rehab sucks for anybody that's been in rehab. I mean, it's harder than anything I've ever done before in my life. You got to really like find something in your head and in your mind to like get you, you know, to get up off the couch every day. But um, it, it's a struggle and I appreciate that I went through it. I feel like I'm on the way out of it. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for what's to come, but I do appreciate that I went through something like that because it made me, uh, you know, kind of appreciate like everything that's going on, what I have and, and what I do. Oh, for sure. So when you say appreciate, you know, because you've never been injured, seriously injured, mm -hmm. um, sometimes we can take things for granted, take our skill right. or our ability to do things for granted. So this allowed you to step back and really appreciate being healthy and then yeah. having to fight your way back. Right. And I think the health thing I've never really focused on, honestly, I don't think before my surgery, I think a couple things caught up to me because I wasn't really taking care of myself. You know what I mean? And I think it makes you appreciate and kind of focus on what do you do pregame? How are you eating? Like, what are you doing for exercise? How's your mind? Like, how's your spirit? Like it kind of just everything got rocked and I got exposed on like a bunch of different areas in my life. And I might've thought and looked like I had it all together, but it was really like, kind of like a, Hey, get it together. Like, like start, you know, working on you. So um, like I said, being on pause, the only thing you really kind of have to do is look at yourself and, and kind of establish like, all right, I got to make some adjustments in my life. And then um, that's kind of another reason why I pulled out of it. I just feel like I started focusing on the right things. Nice, nice. So if you're just tuning in for Set Real Talk Tuesday, I have Lauren Chamberlain, professional softball player for you, Triple SA Pride. Uh, you know, we talk about how in life you're going to go through something. And for you, going through this injury allowed you to step back and reevaluate different areas, kind of maybe take it from a holistic 
right. uh, approach, not just, you know, your play, but where you are mentally and everything. So yeah. it's good that you went through it, but what did you, were there any, um, I mean, I heard you say that you looked up athletes that had been injured. Yes. What yeah. made you do that? And what did you find out? I, um, I looked up honestly, like, uh, MLB, like famous MLB players that had had like a Tommy John surgery or a shoulder surgery, because I, I kind of underestimated the, this surgery and, and what it would do to me and kind of set me back because shoulder surgeries, I I've heard, I, I'm not trying to pay out poor pity me, but like, I've heard they are like one of the toughest surgeries to get is, is that shoulder surgery. So I think, um, understanding that I'm not going to, as soon as I got the clear to start throwing, I was like, I better be throwing a hundred miles an hour. Right. So like I get to throwing and it still hurts. So then I'm like, what's going on? I'm on Google. Like how did, you know, what was the next step? And they're like, dude, it's going to hurt for a couple months. Like relax. Like, so it's just, it's that, it's that anxious, I want to be better right now. As soon as I start feeling good, I want to be better. So I think just like looking through, you know, even golfers having major back injuries, just, just kind of, and like you see tiger, like going out after being just like hit with the back injuries and then going out and being on a course again. And like, you know, he might not feel like a hundred percent like himself, but at least he's doing what he loves to do, you know? So I think taking a different approach and, and thinking more process and not results. Nice. So May is when you start back. Yes. Yeah. Head to, to Orlando. Yes. So between now and May, every day you're doing something to get better. Yes, I have to. Yeah. Okay. It's just making that conscious decision. So what is your goal when you get back? Are you saying to yourself, I'm going to be better than ever? I'm going to, you know, just to be able to throw and not feel your shoulder. Yeah, I, it's kind of. I know I'm going to feel my shoulder. That's been one of the things that I've just had to like, I'm going to have to overcome some of the mental hesitation, I guess, when I'm throwing, I'm going to be back on defense, which is amazing. I've been just hitting the past two seasons, just hitting. So I haven't even touched the field, which I miss playing defense. So I'm going to be doing that. I do feel like health wise, physically, I'm getting to be in the best shape that I've been in, in the last couple of years. So I think I'm going to be a step ahead of the game in that way. Um, but as soon as I get the clear to like completely go, like I'm going to be handling my business this season. Oh, nice. but guys, we're live. This is real talk. This is real talk. <laughs> that was my sister. Hey, <laughs> sister of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. So we talked about, you know, softball and I want you to tell our viewers, guys, if you're just tuning in, I have Lauren Chamberlain, professional softball player for US, U Triple SA Pride. Mm -hmm. uh, there are five professional softball teams in the USA. Mm -hmm. On the five teams, there's 24 players. So coming out of college, if you're playing softball in college, you, you can't even think about playing professionally until once you've graduated. Then once you graduate, you enter the draft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us, walk us through what that was like for you. You got this. You got this. I am. Um, well, when I got drafted, it was 2015. I, I went number one overall. And I Woo! actually, yeah, I went back to back with a teammate that played at OU. So she went number two, Shelby Penley, which was so dope. But we were on campus. Um, we got the teammates together. We actually went to like our favorite spot on campus, a hot dog place. And um I know that sounds funny, but we're literally just like eating and like watching like on TV. And last year the draft was actually online. So I was the last year um, to really like be on TV, see myself, be with my friends, see my name pop up on TV. You know what I mean? So it was a really special moment for me. Um, again, it just kind of made me feel legit. Like I, I, I really was like, okay, this is cool. I had, I had, you know, teammates, friends around me. I, I'll never forget that memory, but yeah, that's what the draft is. It'll look a little different this year with some teams moving around, but um, I was really appreciative and happy that it got to be on TV. That is awesome. So when you say look a little different, it's because change of ownership. Yeah, we have a couple ownership changes. We have some international teams coming in. We have two Chinese teams now and an Australian team. So it's, um, it's kind of got a different vibe. Um, things are always changing and everybody's trying to amp up and really like play the best competition in mm -hmm. the U S. So everybody's kind of coming over with the Olympics rolling around. So it's just kind of, it, 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 like I said, it's different. Um, I think with international teams and different ownership, it makes it extremely difficult for us players to find spots on teams. So that's so, something you want to work on, you know, let's rewind just 
for a moment, there mm-hmm. are Chinese teams and Australian teams coming to the United States. Yes. To play. So they're going to be part of the USSA. So USSA is one team. That's our team. And then we've got okay. a Chicago team and then the international teams. So it's like I said, it's going to have a different look because we're not playing US teams. There's another one in our league. Um, but it's just, it's changing. We have to embrace it for now. I mean, it's our league. So we have to kind of take, you know, roll with the punches and, and appreciate change. Wow. Okay. So different competition. Yeah, and um, it's different, so it, it'll it'll be different. Mm-hmm. So when the when the Olympics come comes around, though, those players will go back to their homes and be playing against you. Yeah. So, like the Australian team, I'm assuming a bulk of that team is going to be on the Australian, you know, Olympic squad. Mm-hmm. And um, Canada, I know there's been some talk maybe coming in later on. Um, there's just with, with Chinese, it's their China, Chinese Taipei team, so they're they're in the Olympics. I mean, it's just kind of getting different looks, and I, I do like the international gig because it's it just gives you a different look of softball. I mean, you can play against U.S., 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 but when you get different, you know, cultures and different um, styles of play in, it definitely helps, like, you know, kind of widen your game. Wow. Okay, so when you say styles of play, how would you uh, sum up your style? My style of play. Man, I'm big. I'm extra when I play. <laughs> I love hitting. Hitting is my baby. I've always been good at hitting. Um, I, I just have a big swing. Like, everything is really, like, dramatic. They're always looking for that big bomb when I'm hitting. So, um, I do love, love, love hitting. Um, defense, I, I'm pretty chill, really quiet. But I kind of have – there's a different look about California players. I feel like there's a different type of swag. So, um, I tried to keep that intact, even though I'm living in Oklahoma now. <laughs> So you're not going to keep it subdued. You're going to, you know, bring the swag. I mean, y'all know who I am. Like, when I come up to the <laughs> – <laughs> Better ask somebody if you don't. If you, like, if you don't know, you're going to know. So that's kind of mm-hmm. hard. I love it. Y'all hear her? That <laughs> is confidence right there. But, oh, oh I mean, what be. else are we going to get from the I number mean, one draft pick? You have to be. That's just sports in general. You got to keep your – I mean – if you don't believe in yourself, the, the person facing you isn't going to, you know, so you got to kind of bring a little extra. That's a key. Mm-hmm. Guys. Everything in life. Everything in life. <laughs> look here. If you don't believe in yourself, the person watching you isn't. The person looking at you is not going to believe in you. Right. Yes. <laughs> key. Okay. So we talked about getting ready for the Olympics. In May, the season, you're going back to training camp, heading back mm-hmm. to Orlando area, Melbourne. Mm-hmm. So dating. Love that topic. <laughs> Nobody special. So you're heading out by yourself. Are there like people that ha- that are married playing softball? They bring their families. How yeah. does it work? Yeah, there's a there's a couple women that have kids. Um, the the tough part about our league and just softball in general is it's not a very lucrative sport. So mm-hmm. um, a lot of times, like I said earlier, good players are having to retire and and kind of move on to different things. So we don't get a lot of mamas, but we do get people that have been in the league. They take a few years off and then come back. Uh, and Stacey Mae Johnson's doing that on Chicago. And it's like so cool. She's got her kids and, and, and husband in the stands. Like, I love that. Love that. I would do that. So I think it's cool. Nice. Okay, so you would do that. But right now you're single. Very, yep. Mm-hmm. Single and ready to mingle. <laughs> so, I mean, what is it that – give us top three qualities. Um, that you look for in a guy the first one I would say has to be true confidence like there's so much fake confidence out there and as you date you kind of you'll wither through it you know and just kind of like see really like the fake from the true so I I think I can always appreciate when you've got somebody with um, roommates kind of I can always appreciate somebody that has um you know, enough security in themselves to look at me and appreciate what I'm doing and, and be cool with the life I live. Cause a lot of people can't handle it. It's just kind of, I'm out doing what I love to do, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't be, you know, in a loyal, loving relationship. So I think definitely true confidence. Um, they gotta be funny. They have to have a, a sense of humor. I laugh all the time. I'm always smiling. So I feel like if they can get my sense of humor, if I can start to make them laugh, like that makes me love you more. <laughs> like I'm really, I get into that. I also think just the athlete in general is going to be a better, a better gig for me. Um, just being an athlete myself, it's easier to 
uh, relate on different topics, schedule. I mean, we understand if, if I'm here, you're there, not a big deal. Um, I do like my alone time too, so I'm not really worried about that, but um, definitely an athlete just on, on mindset waves and mindset level, I can, I can um, you know, relate to it easier. Okay, so when you say athlete, is there a particular sport that you prefer? I, no, actually, I, I feel like I've dated, uh, you know, all different types of athletes and, and I've appreciated their, their sport. And mm -hmm. I think it would be tough to date a baseball player. I do think that because we're, our sports are so similar and I feel like I would just be, uh, I would be tough after teams, like, <laughs> like if, if like they were to go, you know, something and I could really see an adjustment that I could make, I would let them know. And I don't, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to like keep my mouth shut, but at least with like, you know, different sports like basketball, there's so many things about basketball I don't really know about. So I think I like the idea of like learning a sport. Yeah. Okay. So you were at all-star. You have your eye on anybody in particular? No girl. I was having a good time. But, um, <laughs> Young Money, I'm, I'm with Young Money um, Sports Agency, and mm -hmm. um, I got to meet Wayne. That was dope. It was really cool. Like, everything was just a different vibe out there when you, when you, you know, start knowing people and, and you get yeah. to do all these fun things and interact with people. So, honestly, I was just having a good – like, when I go out, it's, it's honestly for me. When I dress up, it's for me. When I put makeup on, it's for me. It, it's kind of one of those things that I'm in a point in my life I'm having a good time with my girls mm -hmm. and going out and um, just enjoying life. So were you listening to, to Lil Wayne before you became a young money athlete? Yeah, he was, he was in my car, like when we would burn the discs and you would like put <laughs> different tracks on the disc, like all his Carter albums, like everything was on there. And when young money kind of like started out with like Nikki and Drake and it was just like, Nikki had Pink Friday album and it was just mm -hmm. like, oh my, and Drake has been like with me through everything. Like Drake, like, no, I'm like, you were with me at every single time in my life. Like I have a thing for Drake, but just all of them, you know, put together, like, that was, like, my high school, like, you know, middle school going into high school, so. I mean, so, is there anything that you bump before the game that just gets you extra hype? I'm always playing rap, like, it, it doesn't matter, it's got to be, like, any type of good beat, um, Drake always has something good for competition, because he's always talking smack, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, anything like that, uh, is usually pretty good, but, um, sometimes I get into, like, I don't know what the genre is. It's like dance or like something like that. Like anything like with a good beat. Like I like a good, like I'm at the club and <laughs> I'm throwing it back. Like I, we get so stupid in the locker room. So it's definitely a party. It's gotta be something upbeat. Getting you hyped, ready to go out there on the field and take on the competition. Exactly. Okay. So in parting, is there anything that you want to share um, to keep, I mean, you know, you go through injury, you battle your way back. Now you're on the other side, you know, coming out of it. Is there anything that you want to share? Uh, words of encouragement for somebody that's watching that just might be going through something. It may not be an injury. It may be a tough time in life. Right. I think my biggest thing is um, seasons of life. There's a season. I don't know what, what Bible verse it is, but there's a season under God like for every single thing in life that you go through. So I almost got it as a tattoo. Like it will come to an end. Like your, your bad period will come to an end, but the longer you sit in it and you dwell on it, the longer it'll last. So I think just find a way to feel like recognize, like, this is who I am. Like I need to get back to me, take a look in the mirror. Even if it's like your toughest day, like find a way to get better that day. I read something in a book. It's like, make the right, the next right choice, like always make the next right choice. And so even if you feel like you can't get out of something or there's just no way you have an opportunity to make a choice, whether it's, you know, choosing, you know, something over pizza, even though I love my pizza, it's like, choose that. Or like, I don't want to go do this workout, get up and do the workout, like make the, the next right choice. And that'll kind of get you on your way. Yes. Another key. And the nugget. You got the keys. Yes. Keys, keys, keys. Okay. So, yeah, guys, Lauren Chamberlain, professional softball, U Triple SA, preparing for the next season for the Pride. Uh, you know, we're going to be watching out for you. Thank if you're you. not following Lauren on social media, Lauren, where can they find you on Instagram? Yes. Instagram is lowchamberlain.com and Twitter is lchamberlain44. So guys, welcome. follow her. You'll see what she has going on. I'm always on my story. So, so go check it out. You'll see what I do. Yes. And I've been following, loving what, what she's got going on. I'm looking forward to seeing her uh, actualizing her third grade project in 2020. Right. Hopefully. 
<laughs> yes, we'll be cheering you on. And so, you know, and then you, what's next? You, you talked about perhaps playing in Japan, going overseas. Yeah, that's always been an option that was presented to me early on, um, right when I got out of college. And uh, at this point in my life, I'm pretty busy here, you know, building my brand and continuing to build my brand and um, meeting new people. And, and with that agency sign and, and just renewing my contract, I have a lot of responsibility here. Um, but that is definitely not off the table. That's always been something that I've considered. So hopefully in the future, that, that could be part of my plan. Expanding the brand. Yes, ma'am. That's what it's about. But you know what? None of it could happen without that swag and the confidence that you have. You know, just watching you do your thing. I am proud of you. Thank Young you. Young money, new fun and a new contract. You know, big things in store. Coming off your injury, girl, keep up with the bar. Yeah, I got, I got to. I'll be on my tiptoes. I mean, they have you in all different types of things. So, as I, I mean, I might go in the Olympics as, like, you know, a ballerina or something. <laughs> Who knows? All right, Miss <laughs> Copeland, watch out. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you know what? Follow Lauren. We're going to be keeping up with you. Lauren, thank you for joining us for Set Real Talk Tuesday. Thank you. Thank I'm looking forward to having you in Set Magazine. Please do. I, I'm there. Just let me yeah, know. Absolutely. So guys, you know what? Follow Lauren. We will be back same place, same time for Set Real Talk Tuesday next week. But until then, I am Danisha Roll and I'm set. I'm Lauren Chamberlain and I'm set. Bye guys. Happy Tuesday.